Celebrating four years of talk like you've never heard it before, this is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Q announcer. Okay, hi everybody. How are you? I'm the announcer. I'll be here until midnight tonight, uh, Eastern Time. I have no guest right now, so that means for the next little while, I'm just going to blab at you. Uh, I may actually go to the phones earlier. Uh, I always say that I have something to talk about and have nothing to talk about, and then I blab forever. Hold on a second. Let me. I'm reaching over here to get uh, to get some stuff that I printed out, but I. Yeah. The, I just have two pages of stuff here. That's it. I have nothing else. Uh, I mean, I could talk about what's going on in the news, but we're going to be, we'll undoubtedly be talking about that later, because today has been a rather eventful day news-wise, uh, and uh, we'll get to all of that, as I say, later. Uh, oh, I mean, I could talk about it now, but uh, let's face it, uh, this whole presidency is falling apart. It's falling apart at the seams. Uh, this so-called great businessman is showing what an organizer he is and how he can bring together a great team to take the United States and move it in the right direction because he had a business and he knows how to manage people. Let me ask you a question. Would you ever want to work for that guy? I mean, it must have been hell working for him. You know, just, I mean, it's my way or the highway. Oh, look, I'm bald. You see that? You see? I mean, I should just I should sh just do this. I mean, if my ex-wife has is brave enough to do it, why shouldn't I? Anyway, so, uh, but we'll, we'll get into all of that about uh, Trump and his peccadilloes and everything that's gone wrong. And today was the day when it all kind of started imploding uh, and uh, of its own accord. Uh, nothing that anybody else did to him. It's not like somebody came along and charged him with something. Now I look over here, nobody's watching the goddamn show, so I could probably take my clothes off here. No. Anyway, where, 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 where should I go uh, in discussing stuff? You know, I, I, I said something last night, and I guess I could say it again tonight to you, um, and, and it was, it's very true, and, and that is that I would not want to be a kid growing up in this day and age. Um, what are your prospects, you know? Uh, then they're kind of dismal. You know, when I was a kid, you had that idea that you could grow up to be anything you wanted to. And today, uh, I guess, well, at least I believe that as a white kid. I didn't know that black kids didn't have the same ability, although I got to know a lot of black kids and found out that they didn't have the same ability. I'll tell you a story. I've told the story before, and it's worth telling again. I had two great friends named the Barron Brothers. Uh, the Barron Brothers, both of them very talented. Both of them were singers. Both of them had a, uh, had a uh, singing group. I'm trying to remember the name of it now, and I can't remember the name of it. Uh, but they used to like sing at high school rallies, and then later on they, they were trying to make it as singers. And um, uh, I, I got to know them, and I really liked them. And they had a, they had a, um, uh, a father. Uh, who was a very successful black businessman in Marin County. Now, remember, we're talking about the 1950s, and to be a successful black entrepreneur in San Rafael, California, was almost an impossibility. But this guy did it, and he did it in a way, I guess, that was acceptable for black people at the time. He ran a shoe repair shop. Uh, where they, they gave shoe shines, but he also repaired shoes. And it was on 4th Street, and it, was, it, it did amazingly well. Everybody brought their shoes to, to Theo because he had great, he, he did great work, right? Uh, and uh, so I got to know these, these kids. They were, got to be my friends. And I, 
I started to hang out with them, and at one point, I was invited over to their home. Now, at that time, they lived in Marin City. Now, let me explain Marin City to you for a second. It's in Marin County. If you live in Marin, you know what I'm talking about. There's a place called Marin City. Well, at that time, it was kind of in an all-white Marin. I mean, Marin was a very white county. Uh, it was the ghetto, okay? And, uh, excuse me, my nose is itchy. And uh, it was the ghetto. And um, it was a bunch of shacks that had been built during World War II so that people who worked at the, uh, at the, uh, at the uh, shipbuilding places in Marin, where they were building ships for the war, because they were building ships all around the Bay Area. I mean, uh, over in Vallejo, there was huge complex. But they also built them in, uh, in uh, uh, San Ra the bay in San Rafael, right off of Sausalito. And they built these shacks that the workers could live in. Well, after the war, the shacks were still there, and who started living in them? But people who were, let's say, not particularly of any great amount of means financially, uh, because, and they were cheap. So uh, they did say, what the hell, they're cheap, but we'll, we'll live there. And they started living in these what were, I guess we could almost call them shacks that were t built as temporary housing for the ship workers uh, in Sausalito during the war. And uh, Theo and his family and the kids grew, uh, had one of these places or lived in one of these places and uh, they had for a long time, and it was the ghetto. It's where all the blacks, basically the blacks, live there. So uh, um, I got to know Theo, and I went over to their place several times. And one night I'm there, and we're talking, and Theo tells me, you know what, they're building a whole bunch of really nice housing up on the hill, uh, and I'm going to buy one of them. And then they're going to tear down all these shacks. And then also over to the side, they're going to build giant buildings for housing for people, which later on we knew as uh, uh, the projects. It really was what, what you would refer to as the projects. So, but he was going to buy one of the houses, which were not that expensive, but certainly you didn't have enough money to do anything about it if you didn't have any money. But he did. He had lots of money. And he said, I'm going to buy one of those houses and I'm going to move the family up there. And I said to him, I said, you know, Theo, I mean, you do very well in that store in San Rafael. Why don't you just get a house out in Marin? Because I'm this kid who's like uh, completely naive. I'm this white kid who doesn't really understand the world because I don't see color. I, I don't see color. I mean, I'm hanging out with these black guys. They're my friends. And all I look upon them as is my friends, not as a being black or being different or anything like that. And he said, looks at me and he kind of laughs and he says, hey, kid, he says, I really want to thank the white people. <laughs> and I said, what for? And I said, I want to thank them for making me very rich. I said, how's that? He said, I couldn't move into your part of the county if I wanted to. If I went in there with a huge bundle of cash, which I actually have, and decide to buy a house in that part of the, of the county because they don't sell to blacks. Well, I, you know, again, I'm the naive kid. I'm, what, 16 at the time, 17? So I'm naive as hell, and I... I I, I didn't latch on to this concept. I hadn't noticed that there weren't any black kids in my neighborhood. He said, I really want to thank you because you have allowed me to save a hell of a lot of money by not having to buy in your part of the county. And when I buy that really nice home that they're building on top of the hills here in, 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 uh, in Marin City, uh, it's going to be so much cheaper than if I moved into a house in your part of the county. So I want to thank you guys for making me rich. And he kind of just explained it to me. He said, you know, he says just that there's this thing called racism and we just aren't allowed to live in, uh, in your part of the county. 
And I just, somehow I didn't understand that. I didn't understand it because I really, I really liked the guy, and I, I never saw a, a, a racial barrier. Uh, but, of course, there was one. There was no question about it. But uh, I, uh, uh, that was my first big lesson in what racism was. But I'll tell you another example of it. So I had these two friends. I, I'm trying to remember the name, uh, the, the Baron brothers. I'm trying to remember uh, there, was, uh, there was Theo the father, and then there, was this, there were the two sons, and I'm trying to remember their names now. I mean, they were really close to me at the time, but I can't remember their names now. It's many years ago, you know, many, many years ago. It's like like 60 years ago. Um, and one of them was especially a, a very good friend of mine. And uh, I went away. I had to go away to the Navy, all right? That's how I took care of my military service. I saw that the, you know, that the draft was going to be uh, breathing down my neck and that I had to do something about it, so I joined the Navy Reserve. And the Navy Reserve allowed me to join the United States Navy uh, and uh, do a two-year hitch as part of my reserve requirement. And after doing that two-year hitch, as opposed to the Army where you did a six-month hitch and then you had to keep going to meetings for like six years, after... I was through with my two years in the Navy. I was not obligated, unless I wanted to, to go to meetings. So I went and took two years and went into the United States Navy, and I was lucky enough to be stationed at the Armed Forces Radio and Television Service in Hollywood. Uh, it's another story how that came to be. And uh, uh, the war, uh, the war, the, uh, my tour of duty was over with, and I went back to Marin, and the first person I call up is one of the Baron brothers. God, why can't I remember his name? Uh, I, I'm sure when this show is over with, I will remember his name, okay? But the one that was my, my closest friend of the two, one of the brothers was a, kind of a little, uh, he didn't like me too much because I was white, and the other one did like me because I was, you know, because he didn't see a, a racial divide. But anyway, I went back and I called him up and I said, let's get together. I'm back. I'm out of the Navy. I'm here. Now, in the intervening time between the time I went in the Navy and the time I got out of the Navy, something happened in this country. And it was called racial uprising, where uh, L.A. was in flames. I remember that because I was down in L.A. when that happened. And th there was a whole awakening of black people saying, you know something, we're not going to take this shit any longer. And um, I went and um, I called my friend, he's black, right, you know, and I said, I, I want to see you, you know, uh, good times are here again, right? And he said, I'll see you at uh, such and such a bar, it was a bar along the water. And uh, I, I used to know the name of the bar, and I can't remember it. Uh, and so I met him there, and he shows up. And we start talking, how you doing? And he's, like, really cold to me. And uh, we're, we're talking for a while, and he said, uh, I got something to talk to you about. And I said, what? He said, we can't see each other anymore. Now, uh, I was stunned, because this, this guy was literally one of my best friends when I was younger, before I went into the Navy. And I just thought that, you know, he would still be my best friend. He says, listen, he said, you're my friend. I like you. You're a good guy. He said, but something's happened in this country. He said, and there's a racial awakening in this country in which you are now perceived as the enemy. He said, and I can't see you anymore because I'm black and you're white and I have to fight the good fight for blacks in this country. And I don't think anything in my young life hurt me more than hearing that because it was something I had no control over. It wasn't something I had done. I wasn't being a racist to him or anything else. But the times had dictated that he felt he could no longer be friends with a white guy. 
And ever since that day, I've hated racism for more than anything else, robbing me of a friendship. Uh, and I left that uh, that meeting, you know, whatever you would call it, and I was devastated, just absolutely devastated. And it was from that time on that I began to realize how horrible racism was in this country. And and I had never, you know, I was a I was a People were calling me gutsy because I would hang around with these black guys. And then I, I remember once, because I was, wanted to do it, there was a big, there was a, what they called a dance over in, um, in um, uh, what do you call it, across the bay, Richmond. Uh, and uh, Richmond was an, pretty much an all-black community. But there was what they called a dance. Now, in those days, uh, they would hold a thing called a dance. But what they would do is they would bring in some fairly well-known performers to play at this dance. And they would play the music and sing their music, and you would dance to it, right? You know. And so they said, hey, we're going over to Richmond. You want to come with us? We're going to go see a, you know. And it turned out they were going to go see one of my favorite musical artists who was playing at this, quote, dance, unquote. And his name was Ray Charles. And I said, Ray Charles, I'm there. You know, probably the only white kid in, in Marin County going, ah, uh, Ray Charles, <laughs> I'm, I'm there. So we went over, and I'll never forget it. We went over before Ray Charles went on. And the first act got up and performed. They always had an opening act. Now, you got to realize, this is not a concert. This is a dance, they called it. There were no seats. It was a ballroom. And you stood there, and you either watched the act, or you found somebody, and you danced with them to the music that the guys on stage were playing. And the opening act for Ray Charles was a then largely unknown act known as Ike and Tina Turner. Now, if I told you, to, when I'm telling you today that I went to a, to a, a concert slash dance uh, that uh, featured Ray Charles as the lead and that the opening act was Ike and Tina Turner, you would say, man, you were lucky. <laughs> well, that's what I got for hanging out with black people. I got a treat like that. But I've always, you know, uh, I've always... One thing I've always hated in this world, I mean, my biggest uh, uh, hatred is against racists and against the institution of racism, which exists to this very day. Uh, you know, it, it takes different forms. I mean, do black people have more opportunities than they had then? Yes. Uh, do they, are they, are some of them more successful than black people used to be? Yes. Uh, as a whole, has racism gone away? Absolutely not. It's just that they've managed to carve out a place for themselves in this society. But if they don't play baseball, or they don't play football, or some kind of sport, or they don't sing and dance, uh, there's still not a wide berth. You know, so uh, I just believe that to this day, racism exists. But it's a terrible thing. And you know, it's funny, some countries say, well, it exists in all countries. Well, but not in exactly the same way. Look at English, British television. You ever watch British television? Hmm. One thing I noticed that was exceptional about British television was they take a, oh, what's a message here? Let's see, Richard Johansson says, I called yesterday and I'm going to Bangkok in this gaming joint so I'm mute, I'll mute my mic, I'll mute the whole headset. Sorry for the trouble. Oh no, that's no trouble. Uh, it was just that we couldn't hear you, so you know, it was, we had to hang up with you rather than deal with it. Anyway, where was I, where was I, where was I? Oh, I was talking about racism today. Uh, well, you know, I mean, you know, cops are going around shooting black people because they're black. Uh, and uh, it's just, you know, it still exists. But Oh, I was going to say England. That was it. The British have a different thing going for them. If you watch British television, uh, they will have somebody playing a part 
that basically is could be played by a white guy. Could play be played. To, well, it would probably be pay, played by a white guy in this country, but they get a black guy to play the part. Just you know, and there's no reference to the fact that they're black. There can be a period uh, such a thing where it's like uh, Queen Victoria and she's growing up, and her best friend in bloomers and frocks and everything like that is black. And it's just because the best actor they could get for the part was black, and they don't say, this part has to be black for authenticity. And so people in England are very used to seeing people of color playing all manner of roles. I mean, Luther, the part played by Idris Elba, the sexiest man alive, and I'll even say that as a, as a guy, um, Luther has no race. There's no racial component to the character of Luther, played by Idris Elba. Uh, he's a cop, and that's it. And he's got his own little cop problems, you know? And uh, uh, so, uh, uh, but we still have that element of racism in here. You know, they'll go, well, we can have him play that part, but, you know, he's black, and the part is really written for a white guy. Well, how's it written for a white guy? It's written for a human being who has a certain set of problems and so on. So, anyway. I digress. I just, you know. So anyway, I learned my lesson about racism, and I, you know, I really hated racism all the more because I was being robbed uh, by a friend of his uh, companionship and his friendship because of the racial climate of the times. And uh, I couldn't blame it on me. I had nothing to do with it. I didn't do anything to encourage it. I didn't do anything to... Uh, exacerbated I uh, as an you know my father always preached against racism to me and that he was against uh, you know that, that, that everybody should get along because my father was a musician and musicians were different colors uh, although most of the bands he played in were predominantly white but he worked some bands where they were where there were black people working on so anyway that's my history with racism and I'm sticking to it anyway let's go to the phones here uh, there aren't a lot of people listening tonight. I guess we're getting close to the holidays. Thank God we're taking a couple of weeks off. We're uh, we're off as of tomorrow night. We're off until uh, until uh, the second of January. That's our uh, uh, our uh, schedule. Uh, and we're just going to be take the time off and you know let our let our people relax and take it easy. And it's also a logical time to do it because people. Uh, don't really listen much during that period of time, and it's a it's a low flow time of the year. So uh, you know, I like to just uh, for the week I'll be playing like uh, the stuff I played last year. You know, uh, my uh, history of my life for sixty seven episodes, and then a bunch of old shows from this year, and some old interviews, and things like that. And on Christmas Eve, we'll be playing. Uh, and Christmas Day, we'll playing, be playing Christmas-themed radio, old radio shows. And uh, the same thing will be true on New Year's. We have a bunch of programs that are New Year's-themed shows. So, Oh, look who's the first one calling tonight. Uh, all the way from uh, um, Dubai, ladies and gentlemen, it's Bree. Hello, Bree. Uh, Good uh, morning. Uh, yeah, uh, can you uh, turn on your camera so we can... Uh, I can't right now. I'm just waiting, waking up. Oh, because we just have a picture of you there, and that's yeah. That's, well, that's me. Since you're the only one calling right now, you know it. Uh, Come on, everybody, call in. Yeah, everybody, call in, so the picture won't uh, just be the only thing on the screen. Um, yeah. But uh, anyway, oh, who's uh, who's uh, calling here? Oh, Richard says I'll try to give you um, a, a call. Okay, great. Let's. Oh, here here, here comes Phil. So that, that that that'll give us some video. Uh, uh, Phil, are you there? The other day, that you there. you and Phil are kind of like Hannity and Combs, you know, but uh, re, you know, kind of reverse dynamic. Well, I I'd like to think maybe we're uh, it's a little nicer than that. <laughs> 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 you know. Um, uh, hello, Phil. Hey, how you doing? Yep. And hi, Bree. Yeah. Hello. Uh, Greetings. You know, we uh, we had a little tete-a-tete uh, -tete last night, uh, you and me, Alex, uh, on the air. You said that, uh, you know, where this four, I said $4.5 billion was going to Mexico. 
Well, and you said I didn't hear anything about that. I did. Well, and you sent well, me a thing where you you showed an article that talked about it. However, let's, from the AP. Yeah, from AP. But let's let's talk about that for a second. To begin All with, right. house. you didn't exactly characterize it well. It was four point uh, eight billion. Well, it was four point no, but you didn't characterize it well. You said, "Oh, we're just giving them money," you know. Well, the well, idea it, it of was, giving no, them, I didn't. no, the idea of giving them this money was to encourage them to create jobs in that part of the world to help right. try and give people reasons to stay there rather than come across the border looking for work. And yes. I think that's perfectly a reasonable thing to do. Yeah. Well, four point eight billion was going to southern Mexico uh, to help on the border of southern Mexico. But I alluded, or not not even alluded, I said, well, you know, with this four point five billion, I thought it was. Yeah. Uh, I said, uh, you know, maybe what they're going to do is give that back to Trump to build his wall. <laughs> and uh, you know, I was being facetious on the four point five billion. Well, but yeah, really, there is well, no, but no, I, no, but, but I, Phil? what, what, uh, no, yeah, no, here, but here's uh, here, uh, hello, yet. by the way, to Charles Wallace, who's calling. Hey, Charlie, Charlie. how you Bye. doing? Uh, 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 I, I, I certainly, I would say, giving them money to pop, prop up their economy and create jobs down there is a much better way of solving the problem than building a wall. Well, you, you think that that you know, but that's only part of it. You know, uh, Mexico actually has a wall between what is it, Guatemala and Mexico? Uh, or is it Honduras or Guatemala that's next to Mexico? It's a what about ism. Who cares? That has well, nothing to do with what my, we're talking my, about. My comment yesterday was was uh, you beat me up because you said I didn't hear about this. Well, anytime I have a and, chance to beat you up, I will, Phil. You know that. Okay, but this is one time. I get to beat you up because you need to take the drink. <laughs> well, no, I, know, I was no, right. No, wait a minute, wait a minute. And, I all and I eight said others was were wrong. Uh, all I all we said was we hadn't heard this, right? Okay, and you did. It was something that wasn't exactly germane to the wall. It had to do with the, our government giving assistance. They also gave not only four point eight million to. Uh, it was ten ten point eight billion. Ten point eight totally. billion totally. Some of it going to Guatemala. Some of it going right. to Honduras, and so right. on, for exactly the same reason to create jobs. Well, and, and, it's, am, and, and quite frankly, I would rather see us spend that kind of money on that as a stopgap. Then build a fucking wall, which is a stupid, stupid idea. And by the way, no, today, today no. Trump, today Trump said, "Well, it doesn't have to be a wall; it can be slats." Right. And then I started to think that by next week, it'll be down to a picket fence. No, Venetian blinds. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but uh, no. All I'm doing is gloating that I was right and that. Uh, all right, gloat you know, away. That, and, Let's and, and I didn't sit. care. I didn't care about the 4.8 billion. I didn't care about Mexico getting the money. All I cared about was being right. <laughs> well, <laughs> Phil, Phil, you're yeah. that stopped watch. Yeah. You know, I mean, <laughs> you're right twice oh. a day. So, so what? You know. Uh, yeah. But uh, all right, okay, so that was my chance to rub right. it in. Wait, hey, you know, here, here, I'm here, glad Charlie's here, on here. here, 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 here. You know, your first your first minutes uh, or half hour, you mm -hmm. were talking about racism. Mm -hmm. You, Alex, Alex, were actually experiencing racism uh, against you. Uh, it wasn't necessarily that your friend. No, I realized uh, that. I realized that. But but yeah. uh, but it was. It was something that was caused by the zeitgeist, the tempo of the times, you know? Yeah. And I hated racism for bringing this situation up. But, yes, he felt he couldn't hang out with the white guy anymore because, he, he as he put it, he said to me, uh, I seem to remember it, he said, we're kind of at war with each other. He said, I love you like a brother. He said, but we're at war with each other now, and I can't hang out with you. Charlie, did you experience any of that stuff in the 60s? Did, did you uh, have any of that um, uh, issues well, Charlie, growing up? How, well, yeah, it came up, especially when I was in college. But um, I fought it. I, I wasn't going to let anybody. I got ostracized, actually, by the, the black group at, at Northwestern because I would not separate. I mean, I had all these white friends that I hung around with. 
And well, you, I, you can I imagine what I got. I, I hung around with all these black friends. And the reason in I, college, the reason I hung I, out with them was because they were in show business, and so was I, or trying to be in show business. And so we and had the a, same with they were in science, and so was I. So um, yeah, so so we, know, we had a we had a common thing that yeah. that, that held us together. Hello, Rob. Hey, hello everybody. How's it going? Hey, Rob. Rob's right off the kitchen right now. <laughs> yes. Yes. He doesn't oh, have to meander yeah. far. He doesn't have to. <clears> meander. My wife is sleeping. Oh, is she really? Yeah. Yeah, she's got to be up. She's got to be at work at four forty-five in the morning. What's she's she got the morning show? Huh? She's got the morning show. What does she do? <laughs> she is a dialysis tech. Oh, okay. All right. So they have to. They start at very early in the morning, so she's sleeping, so I'm down here. Well, wouldn't it be nice if they came up with something better than dialysis as a solution to that problem? Yeah. You know? yeah. Uh, Absolutely. Because yeah, it's called a kidney tra transplant, right? Well, we need artificial kidneys. <laughs> yeah. Where's the artificial kidney, huh? You know. Well, you know, uh, Jeff would that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if he's going to be here tonight. You know, we don't know who's going to be here tonight because we don't. Everybody's either in an airport somewhere trying to get on an airplane, or not if they're in Gatwick uh, Airport in England. Uh, I guess a drone, two drones were flying near the airport, and they closed the whole thing down. Yeah. Six thousand passengers uh, are stranded. And, yeah, here, uh, flights here, all over. I've the got world. a problem with drones and airplanes. Now, I understand they, you have big drones. They're like this, okay? Mm -hmm. That I could see causing some kind of damage. But those little dinky things? Well, did, did you see can, that airplane? Uh, did you see that, air, that airplane that got hit by a drone? Its whole well, nose no, cone they and said, window was smashed. They smashing. said they think it was hit by a drone. They don't know huh. that it was hit by a drone. Uh, you know, all I'm thinking of is if a, a pl if, if a plane with its nose cone hit any of these drones, it would completely obliterate the drone. Well, how fast is a plane traveling? 700 miles an hour? Something like that. Yes, yeah. yes, the drone would be obliterated, but I think it would do some serious damage, damage to the plane. plane. Yeah. yeah. Well, it depends on how big the drone is. If it's one of these small little camera drones like this, I I don't think it could survive, and the plane would just go. Eh, I think we hit something, you know. Yeah, a piece of aluminum hitting you at seven hundred miles an hour is. It could know. pierce the hull. Yeah. 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 Well. Yeah. Uh, I I don't know, but uh, it's just in a new form of terrorism. We'll get a bunch of drones and we'll take down some whole, some uh, people going on vacation. Mm. Drones yeah. aren't as popular as they once were. When they first came out, it was like uh, the thing to buy, especially for photographers. Well, I would buy and a drone in a second. But the problem is, I can't fly it anywhere in New York City. Right. You would think you could go out to Central Park and fly a drone. What, Be right? nice. You go out there and fly kites. Why can't you fly drones? I can mm. understand why they don't want you to do it over the city itself. But Central Park, come on! But I can't yeah. do it, so I've I've never bought one. Well, uh, do you think that maybe some of the New York laws are a little uh, over the top when it comes to uh, restricting freedoms? No, because you of got the thirteen liberal... million people. You know, you got to be a little bit more prudent. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> you know, what are you talking about? Sugarless uh, uh, with, sh sugar yeah, uh, with, drinks? Yeah, would, would that happen under Koch? Or, or, uh, but it would happen under de I, Quite frankly, I think that making uh, putting a higher tax on sugared uh, beverages uh, is a Blue good bird. idea. Because we did it with cigarettes. I mean, sugar uh, like that is bad for you. Yeah. Look at you, Phil. Yeah, but you're supposed but to have you. the freedom to choose whether you want to kill yourself using sugar or not. You know, uh, as long as it I well, then, as long as then it doesn't let, cost then, everybody, and that's yeah. really what the whole issue is, right? The, well, can, the, you know, all you know, these people uh, who can't afford health insurance and they drink you, and drink and all this crap. Uh, and do you think that was Bloomberg's uh, well, well, by or, that uh, thinking, uh, reasoning? By, wait a minute, by that thinking, yes. Phil, by that thinking, Phil, mm -hmm. uh, then you approve of people being able to use heroin if they want to. Yeah, same thing. Uh, 
Yes and no. Uh, oh, well, wait a minute. Where's the no? You just said that, you know, you know. Well, it's it, it's illegal. And it's illegal because it's a controlled substance that uh, shouldn't be delved out by, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's very addicting. And, it, shouldn't, uh, it, shouldn't, it, it, it shouldn't be illegal. It's cigarette a, smoking's addictive. It shouldn't be illegal. It's a, it's a, it's I, a, I think it, it, to me, I think it, cigarettes it, 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 should a, be illegal. It's a, metal, <laughs> it's a medical problem. Listen, you think so? if, you made, if you made cigarettes illegal like you make heroin illegal... Uh, there'd be a drug traffic coming across the border with cigarettes. Is the yeah. fact that I shove too many salami sandwiches into my mouth a, a, a medical problem, or is it just that I have no self-control? Both. You know? Both. <laughs> okay. You know, you but... Know, I, I think it's more I don't have any and, self-control. And by the way, the salami doesn't have any... It didn't have any sugars in it. I, I, uh, it salami sounded good. So, you know? Yes. It, well, you like the idea of a big fat salami in your mouth. I know that, Phil, but, uh, you know. <laughs> well, thank you. How do you know that? <laughs> hey, Jeff, we were yeah. talking about artificial kidneys. By the way, uh, yeah, but, I before that. I go any yeah. further, anybody see last week's Family Guy? No, I don't watch it. Uh, uh, they have a uh, the dog. Should be illegal. Uh, the dog. Uh, gets uh, gets famous, and so they make a balloon for him in the annual parade. And they say women are lining up to help blow up the balloon. <laughs> <laughs> and they're down there, and there's this nozzle that's pink coming out of the thing, and they're down there blowing on it. And and the paw, the giant paw that's on the balloon, is forcing their head down onto the. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm saying to myself, how does fucking Family Guy get away with this shit? Did it say hashtag Me Too in the bottom of the balloon? <laughs> I don't think a live show could get away with that. Yeah, if, if any of you have uh, have Hulu, it's on Hulu. Last week's show, and I just I fucking died when I saw this. I said. And and it's the paw, the the inflatable paw is like it's like it's falling down, but it's pushing their head against the nozzle. <laughs> anyway, that's, I just wanted to see if anybody else saw the same thing I was seeing. Nah, that show should be illegal. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Along with cigarettes and you yeah. see, I mean, I think that that sugar is a big problem in this country. I think it's a big it health problem. Yeah, they say fentanyl is too, but sugar is sugar is 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 turned the last two generations into obese. Uh, you know, we didn't have these kinds of problems 50 years ago. Uh, you know, it was fast food restaurants, high fat, high salt, high sugar. Uh, ever, ever, well, and, ever since I went on this diet of mine, which was several yeah. years ago, I've completely done away with sugar. I'm sure Charlie watches the sugar in his diet because he's diabetic right charlie yeah, yeah. there's sugar in everything i can't eat anything without it spiking my uh thing you have a piece of bread done you, you go for korean food then, then you, you might as the, well forget it you you're gonna you're yeah, gonna be in the 200 there are forms of bread you can get that don't mm -hmm. have sugar in them no i i, I know there's uh, but what i'm saying is you, you go to a, an oriental restaurant and you and you have chinese food you, you're gonna you're gonna shoot your sugar up. You go to Mexican, you're gonna shoot your sugar up. It doesn't matter what you eat. It, it, most of the ethnic stuff has so much sugar. It doesn't look like it has sugar either, but you eat it and boom, you know it's uh, you're off the charts. Well, I don't know. I managed to avoid it, and I lost sixty pounds. You know, now fifty five. Yeah. I put on five, but you know it's winter time. It's winter time. Yeah. Uh, but uh, anyway, you know the combination of sugar, uh, salt, yeah, is a killer for you. Yeah, 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 for me. You know, too. So I, I stay away from uh, salt. And I plan you know, on living. For but it's still in the natural. Yeah. It's in a lot of the food that I, you that you cook yourself. Yeah. Well, I, yeah, I, 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 I stay away from it. I, I am very careful. You know, I always am always when I'm in a store, I'm looking at the back of the pack. To see how many carbs it has, then how many are mm -hmm. are derived from sugar, uh, and what you come up with is net carbs. If you do away with the uh, with the fiber, dietary fiber in an item, and you do away with any like sugar alcohols that are there, 
you come up with a net carb. And I try to keep the net carbs low. Like, for instance, every night we have uh, a, a sugar-free pudding and, and two chocolates. How that, many that net are carbs sh- are you doing a day? Uh, you know, to be in induction on Atkins was 20. Uh, I do. So about, where do you I think do, you I are? do about 20, maybe 25. Really? Yeah. So that, that's, yeah. that's pretty low. Yeah. I mean, uh, but the point is, is that... that uh, um, uh, so the net carbs in one of these puddings is like five carbs, and then the chocolates in five of them, it's one net carb. Mm. So, you know, I, I watch what I look at what I'm eating. I look at what it says on the back. And the one I can't believe is this bread I love <laughs> that I buy at the store. It's got three carbohydrates per serving, and there are five servings in the loaf. So there are 15 carbs in the whole loaf. Now, I don't know how it's that low, but it, they have kept that count on that bread for the last two years. So I'm sure that if they were doing something illegal, they would have stopped it already. I think you guys had mentioned this in the past, that there was a Seinfeld show where they were the eating yogurt. some sort yogurt. of yogurt. Uh, yogurt. 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 Yeah. Frozen yogurt. And it was supposed to not uh, be fattening or something, and they were yeah. eating it like crazy. And it tasted terrific. Yeah, yeah. 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 it was all sugar. <laughs> well, you know what they do is these fat, uh, low-fat stuff, which yeah. I know Alex isn't interested in because if, if fat is what he's burning— uh, with his diet at the amount of carbs he's taking. But with these low-fat meals that you can buy, they're high in salt. Well, low-fat low, low is different than no, than sugar-free, okay? Right. Because you can be low-fat and still have lots of carbs in it. Well, they replace the, the fat with salt to give it taste because the you know fat has taste. And uh, so when you look at these uh, meals, uh, healthy meals or happy meal, they're not not those kinds of things. They're they're actually uh, advertised as like lean cuisine and yeah. things like that. Those are extremely high in salt. Yeah. yeah. And they're also high, believe it or not, in carbohydrates. They're low yeah. in calories. But, they're, right. you know, it depends what diet you're on. Uh, yeah. And if you're on a carb-free diet, then you try to take as few carbs in as possible. Did you, how did your diet go, by the way, Rob? Because you were on that, that diet for a while. Did it work? Yeah, we lost 40, huh? lost 40 pounds. Really? And we were, we were supposed to go back on it um, after uh, Labor Day. Yeah. But that didn't happen. So we're just kind of hanging in there. But you I put a few it? of it back on, yeah. but yeah. not a ton. My wife put a lot of it back on, which is a big waste. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's too bad, but uh, she she can't help herself. Well, I at least, uh, you know, can fi- I figured out how to live on the maintenance diet. Yeah. We got off the diet um, <clears throat> March or April of last year after we lost the 40 pounds. And all summer long, going on a vacation and doing everything I was able to maintain, yeah. We got back on it to lose. I wanted to lose another 40. We got back on it briefly and then got off of it because it just too many things coming up. Yeah, and yeah. if you're so on you that maintain. diet, uh, maintain yeah, I can maintain. Those? But I oh, want to. Really? Yeah. I, the, the problem is I, I want to lose more. What I like. And we, yeah. What I we like, got back I want on you. it, but uh, we, I, I was like, you know what? Every other weekend we're cheating because of this event or that event. And when you cheat on that diet, you mm. suffer big time. And it's so restrictive that <laughs> there's nothing that you can eat when you go to any kind of gathering. So we were figuring from Labor Day until Thanksgiving would have been a perfect window, but it just didn't work out that way. Well, so I, we tried quit, got off yeah. well, I tried oh, Nutrisystems. I tried Nutrisystems. Brutal. Uh, it's fine for the first couple of weeks, and, and after a month, it tastes like cardboard. It's you know? just, you know what? It, it, it you, there's a flavor, there's a consistent flavor that I don't care if it's a dessert, all, all right. the way up to their lasagna or whatever the crap pa- they're eating. It's paper. <laughs> well, it I all have... t- had a, there's a constant flavor, and I can't even describe it. I've never had it before. And I hadn't had it since, but I will some never process, eat that crap it's again. some process thing. You know, everybody who buys that diet ends up with about 600 packages in their yep. uh, cupboard that they yep. hang on to for a while and then throw okay. away. Okay, let me, let me yeah. say this about the low-carb diet. Number one, the reason I've only, I think I, I went down to, uh, about a, at one point I, I actually went down to 100 and, uh, 
uh, uh, seven, uh, 180, and I actually didn't want to go down that low. I, mm-hmm. I, in fact, I, I put the brakes on and started eating a little bit to make sure I wasn't dr- dying, okay? <laughs> uh, but I got back up to about 188. And now, right now, I'm 192. And I fluctuate back and forth between the 188 and the 192, and that's fine with me. But my biggest fear was all these people I see who lose weight, who go on these diets, lose like I did 50 pounds, and within a year they've gained it all back. All back. Yeah. yeah, I have kept this off now, I think, for almost two years. You yeah. know, at least. The last time because I did that, uh, because I never, old- I never said, okay, now I've lost the weight, I can go have a hot fudge sundae. I can't have a hot fudge Sunday, you know. In 2005, I did Atkins, and I lost 80 pounds. And, uh, but I ended up, it took five years, I gained it back plus. You yeah. Know? Yeah. The, uh, what were you going to say, Charlie? You know people who that's happened to, right? Yeah, yeah. You just have to make a complete lifestyle change. You have to realize you, you can't just go on a diet. You have to just change the way you eat permanently, or else you'll gain the weight back. Because the minute you stop the diet and you go back eating the way you were, you gain all the weight back. And on top of that, Alex, I, I work out three days a week now, too. Your friend, the magician, what's his name? Pen uh, Teller or Pen, Pen, uh, Pen Gillette. Yeah. Uh, he lost 100 pounds, but I heard him say to you uh, that uh, uh, in an interview that he changed his lifestyle. Uh, and, well, you have to change. He also didn't go on some crazy diet. He said he he, he said that he just oh, changed his oh, lifestyle. No, he went on a crazy diet. Oh, it was yeah. Uh, yeah, it was an absolutely crazy diet. I, you know, I would say to him that it's unhealthy to lose that much. He lost it in three months. Oh no! Uh-huh. You know, I mean, I I think it was like three Stop months. Do you remember? Do you remember him going on a diet, Rob? And how yeah, long? I remember. I remember that. I remember hearing the interview too. Yeah, and it was like took him like three months, something like that. But, you know, I mean, I, I just feel that you, you should lose. Like, I lost mine over a period of a year. And yeah. so that was steadily and measured. And what I did in the beginning, I never got on a scale for the first seven, eight months. I didn't want to see if I was losing or what I was losing. And I got on the scale, and I was so amazed that I was then encouraged to keep going. It's, it's when you start a diet and... Three days later, you get on the on the scale and you see you haven't lost anything. People yeah. give up, and you should. My my in uh, 2003, my ex wife lost 209 pounds in one day. That's she wow. divorced. Yeah, oh, she yeah. divorced you. She right? she 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 divorced me. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, but uh, you know so. But anyway, I, I have this uh, woman in my uh, bed right now lying there getting fat because she can't work out. She used to like, she used to See, work out. Exercise. She used to work out three days a week, four days a week. She did the cycle, you know, what is it, the spin class, the whole thing. I mean, she yeah. was just an exercise nut, you know. And, and now she can't uh, because of the leg. And I'm just sitting here, they're watching her going, let's see here. Let's see how, how much she's going to plump up not working out. There might be other stuff she can do besides, uh, you know, using her legs uh, to. uh, She'll be. She'll be back in. in She can do isometrics. Yeah, uh, Alex. So they say that she's going to be okay. Like, uh, I don't know. People always tell me when you mess with your knees. Yeah. Like the knee is a. You know what I'm saying? It's it's. So what are they? What are they saying? What do they think? Well, they think as soon as, as as soon as they take the the brace off, that knee is going to be fine. But she's going to have to have physical therapy to get it really yeah. moving again and 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 okay. uh, loose and you know whatever. Uh, until then, it's going to be a bit on the stiff side. She's going to have to do exercises mm-hmm. to get it uh, going again. But the the, the prognosis for a complete and utter cure mm-hmm. is uh, is almost a hundred percent. Their only problem, they said, is they put pins in there. And some people sometimes feel that they can feel the pins and they don't like them. They say after eight months, if you don't, if you feel the pins are bothering you because they're sticking a little bit out of okay. the skin or whatever. So maybe they solved all they that. They said, we'll, we'll just go back in We'll just go back in there and remove the pins because the pins are in there to make, uh, let the, allow the, you know, the bone to heal. Hmm. So, you know. But I got a gimp for a wife. What can I say? Yeah, so. I'm you know, surprised so- that uh, 
that she isn't starting to take some physical therapy already. Well, she can't because she can't move the leg. The three know, months of the stage that, but, the, the reason it's but she no the she reason she can use other parts of her body. Yeah, well, well, no, I'm I, you know I mean she believe me she's getting enough exercise with that cane with that cane and the, well, hobbling around and all the muscle muscles it takes to do that. I mean her exhaustion is not from the knee any longer. <clears throat> it's from having to keep herself uh, without that knee being able to bend and Would having she that be better brace. off with a walker or they no, want no, her to use the I, cane. I, uh, please, uh, I, she doesn't need it. She doesn't need it. Oh, she can actually she's gotten to the point now where she can actually walk without the cane. But mm. she'd rather have the cane because, you know, she doesn't feel completely stable. But yeah. no, I the other day I saw her, she was in the kitchen walking around the kitchen and everything and I said, "Where's your where's your cane?" She said, oh, "It's right over there." You know, she didn't she she doesn't need it all the time. And as long as she knows she has a wall she can lean up against if she has to or a counter, mm -hmm. uh, she feels safe enough. So I mean, she's you know, she's she's on the men. There's no question about that. It's just that it, what one th a thing that took one second to happen is going to take eight months to clear up, you know, yeah. mm -hmm. that uh, it's, it's a pain in the ass. But uh, so anyway, but uh, so the diet did work for you, Rob, you know, that's yep. good. Yeah. Uh, but what your wife couldn't keep away from all the good stuff. Is that the problem? Uh, I, she makes such bad choices. Filipinos eat that rice and uh, rice. <laughs> she could eat rice for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And, pie, and a pasta <laughs> type of dish. And they, they do. And they love fish. Pansa, yeah. Yeah. Pansa, yeah. But I mean, she'll eat rice and fish for breakfast. And I'm like, and it stinks up the house. I'm like, oh <laughs> man. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, now the two of you can have a conversation here. And what's it like to have a Filipino mate? Yeah. <laughs> I actually well, had to spray my car down can... with Febreze today uh, because uh, I, I I brought in uh, lunch for everybody. I went to In Out Burger, no, and the no, fries no. the fries uh, stunk my car up. Phil, yeah, you, you said Phil. flies. <laughs> hey Phil, yeah. yes, yeah, you're using Febreze. I think that's what it was. You spray it in the. Uh, you spray it and, it, and uh, maybe yeah, it's not. Yeah, you got to stop that. You got to stop that. Um, oh, it's bad for the environment. There's a there's a company out of the Philippines called Messy Bessie that has a good one. Messy Bessie. Messy Bessie, but yeah. the fact is, Phil, you cannot use that stuff. There is a. Uh, <clears throat> I met a uh, documentary filmmaker two weeks yeah. ago. Did a film called uh, The Human Experiment. You can watch it on YouTube. But I'll tell you that Febreze killed uh, the a uh, dog in in my parents my it was my brother's dog but she stayed with my parents and and my parents my mom would use the Febreze and on the carpet and the yeah. dog would sleep there and later the dog had like seizures and stuff and and we could never figure out like why we're not doing anything and and then it came back like the vets like. Oh yeah, it's the Febreze. You, you, wow. you didn't tell me you were using that. You look it up, Google it. Febreze and dogs and pets. Well, what what, and, what does it do really, to people? Really bad. What does it do That's to good people? To know. What does it do to people? Uh, what, look what it, it did just, to me. It turned me into a Republican. <laughs> <laughs> just just please don't use it. You know, brain damage. The, the, the thing thanks, I was thanks telling, for people, telling me. People use air fresheners and stuff, and it's like yeah. clean whatever. It, you know, if you want, if you have a smell that's bad, clean it. Make it clean. Don't try to gloss, you know, try to put air fresheners in there. That, that, those chemicals are killing you. you no, know, my, my wife uses one. Uh, she keeps it in the, uh, in the bathroom because she goes, Alex, yeah. did you spray? But it's an orange, or, organic orange spray. It's not, you know, a chemical. So uh, that seems to be fine with me. Except that now the room smells like shit and orange. You know, so uh, so you, you thought your shit didn't stink, huh? huh? Oh, <laughs> it can stink. It can stink, yeah. you know. Especially when I had the IBS real bad. It could really get there, you know. Yeah. You'd think I was dead inside. What you do is you... 
You yeah. flush. You flush right away. Yep. As you're sitting. Oh there. yeah, several flushes. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. Uh, that's Ray Renati. I learned that in the backstage in the theater. Yeah. That's Ray yeah, Renati. Otherwise, it's getting nasty. Guess or what? Or you can buy that stupid. You see the commercials for it all the time, where you spray the water before you go. What do they call it? Poo something. Oh, yeah, I heard of yeah, that. I've seen that commercial. Poopery. Poopery. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's a bunch of names for it, but yeah. Uh, uh, I like using matches. Oh, by the way, today I was we were watching TMZ, and there's this guy who has this thing every week. They they call it the, his rejects, and it's videos that he gets off the off of YouTube or wherever, and and they show them as funny little bits. And he showed one that was just hilarious. This woman uh, had uh, packages stolen from her porch. Right, because porch pirating is a big deal now. So yeah. she put up a video camera on her porch so she could catch whoever was stealing it. And so the video is running. Here comes a dog. <laughs> he, <laughs> yes, and he grabs the package and walks away with it. Trained. Did you see the guy <laughs> that uh, was an engineer and he built some sort of device that when you stole the package, the the the, uh, the person took it into the car because there was glitter four bomb. video cameras on it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and 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 uh, what was it? Glitter? Yeah, glitter exploded in the car. Uh, you you saw that, right, Bree? Yeah. Well, anyway, yeah. so they, they, you know. Uh, yeah, I saw. It. I thought that, that was yeah, very, she, very completely very covered. Well, let's uh, let's talk about some of the things that have gone on in the world today because today is the day that the Trump administration seems to have imploded. What, what, what? You mean the Putin administration? The Putin administration <laughs> yeah. seems to... Hey, it was a busy day. It was a busy day. ...have imploded. It's, it is, it's amazing to think that Putin is running the United States. He, I think of all those years Soviet Union thought they lost, and now yeah. they're in control of the White House in the United States of America. Right. It's yeah, amazing. You know, if this was uh, Harry Truman... When he, I believe he was the one that uh, fired uh, uh, General MacArthur. Uh, who's the guy that wanted MacArthur? MacArthur. Mm -hmm. He fired General MacArthur because MacArthur's uh, vision for the uh, Korean Peninsula did not include his vision. And so uh, Mattis, uh, to his credit, uh, realized that his vision wasn't in line with the commander in chief, and he resigned. And, and neither uh, is anybody do, else's wait vision. Wait a minute. Do you? Well, do, do but you, we elect, I elected. Hold, hold on a second. Hold on a second. Phil, Phil, you, you, you always monopolize the conversation. Let me get All a right, word in edgewise. Ahead. I'm the opposition. Uh, there are those who believe, and I think there's a lot of proof to that, that Mattis, being a military guy, would never quit his command, and that in fact, he was told to go, and that he was fired by Trump. Well, he, he might have been, but mm -hmm. he says he wasn't. He no, says, uh, he, he, quit. he didn't say that. In that final letter, he goes after Trump. He goes after the administration's yeah. attitude towards the things and so on. And then today, what's his name? Uh, the, uh, 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 oh, God. What'd she do? No, the guy from the uh, Congress, you know. Um, what's his name? Lee? Hmm? Mike Lee, was it Mike no, Lee no, no, or, no, no, uh, no. or the head of the Congress? No. Uh, Paul, Paul Lindsey Graham. Lindsey Graham. Oh, Lindsey Graham. Lindsey Graham. Oh, uh, did you see what Congress. did you see what Lindsey Graham said Senate. today? He yeah, said, Lindsey Graham didn't agree with him. Uh, with, didn't agree with Trump either, right? Uh, a no, lot of Republic, A lot of Republicans aren't. They're all starting to jump ship now. Well, you know, you know the only it, one that hasn't jumped ship so far is you, Phil. But it's not a surprise. This is what Trump said he was going to do. He said uh, he didn't want to be in another conflict, and he wanted to get out of Afghanistan. He didn't want to go into Syria. Phil, the only reason he did hey, hey, was to go after ISIS. If you're president of the United States and you don't know a thing, the only thing you know about the military is that you were in a military academy once, you know, and you bring in a guy like Mattis or you bring in uh, people in the Department of Defense, and you appoint them. They, you listen to them because they know the they know what's up, right? Yeah, that's you, true. Wait, 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 let me finish. What? Let me finish. What's his title? Let me finish. You, you you know what's up. You're you're brought in as the expert. That's why you have a cabinet because a president doesn't know everything. 
right? And he needs people who are no, but experts. He's the final in, arbiter. He's the final arbiter, but you usually listen to your sec, the sec, your cabinet on various things, right? The point is that Mattis wasn't even uh, uh, asked about this decision. Trump just took it wrong. on his own. Took it on his own. He didn't go to anybody in Congress and say, hey, what do you think? In the case of Lindsey Graham, he said, this is just uh, a giving up, you know? Well, I, I agreed with, uh, with Mattis. I thought that Trump didn't handle this well, although he is the commander-in-chief, and uh, this is his decision. When he's no longer the commander-in-chief, the new guy can send troops back into Syria. You know something? I, yeah. think, I think somewhere, if I don't know where it is, if it's in the Constitution or wherever, we should do away with making the president the commander-in-chief. Because I agree. most of the time they don't know a thing about the military or about military protocol. And that they should not be considered the commander in chief. I can't. Some I can't believe that a guy whose only military experience was that he went to a military academy because his father didn't want him around the house uh, is that's his only military experience. He never fought in the military. Was never in a military conflict. That he's sitting there being called the commander in chief, and he can call the shots on all this shit. I think well, we need to read. I think we need to redefine the powers of the presidency because when you get a guy in power who says whose attitude is, "I know more about fill in the blank than anybody else," that's dangerous. This guy is being charged 360 degrees around him, and he's in a position to pull a trigger on something to deflect to cause people to not pay attention to some of the things, to change the narrative. We really need to revisit the kind of power the president has because this is what can happen. Remember that movie, I think it was called Wag the Dog? Uh, you know, and it was uh, to uh, create diversion. But the thing is, if Obama... Uh, would you take? Would you have taken those powers away from Obama if he, uh, you know, Obama while he was president? Well, I wouldn't have taken those powers away from George Bush, George W. Bush, because he at least had common sense and he spoke with his cabinets and he. All right, there was one gaffe and it happened. So now, because we had one gaffe, because they thought there were weapons of mass destruction, destruction and there weren't. Suddenly. 250 years of the United States and all that we stand for is all either corrupt, messed up, gone, whatever. And you believe that. You are you believe that. It's not it's not one man, it's everybody else. He's a success in what he's doing. His whole idea he is not a success. success. He, is not he a wanted success, to be a no. disruptor. And as a well, disruptor, Phil, he's Phil, being Phil, very uh, no, no, I think what he's done is he's he's mixed up disrupting with dismantling. Right. Mm -hmm. I think that's the that's a great way to put it. Uh, well, uh, although that's what I, that's I that was his government that was to his shut plan. down. Being a disruptor means uh, being a shit disturber is not a bad thing. You're simply trying to, to well, shake things you know, up. It could be if you're disrupting the wrong shit. Yeah, well, you know, or disrupting someplace where there is, isn't shit. Why yeah. not let the government shut down? Well, well if they're going to shut the government down, well, that's it, just going to be a political nightmare for him. It, it's fine. Let him shut it down. But right yeah, now, it, it happens to be Christmas to time, go. and those people would love to get a paycheck. You know now, did the, the House already approved the five billion dollar wall? Yes, but today. it's not going to yeah, be passed. Yeah, but, but it hasn't got a chance of being passed by the Senate. It it'll go to the Senate, but they don't think it will pass. They no. Do they still the need sixty? Uh, I yeah, think what, they need what 60. happened? What happened? Well, they to need that sixty, majority? but they could change that. Yeah, they, it wasn't, the wasn't Republicans there some could vote to to say they only need fifty, just right, like nuclear they did with the Supreme option. Court. Right, they, they had a nuclear option. We nuclear. could really destroy what the what what's the, we could really destroy the country, make it more partisan. That makes perfect sense to do. It's partisan already. So just keep going, keep going. We're going to blow this country up, and it's Most, not going to be. There's going to be a disaster in this country of of, and not in the country in the world that's going to be 
catastrophic. They say pulling out of Syria may be a cra- catastrophic move on our part. We should never well, have been that, in Syria, you know, according to... You know, we're basically, he wants to pull us out of everywhere. Somebody said today that uh, ISIS, if, uh, if we pull out of Syria, ISIS is going to get emboldened and say, well, let's go after the United States. Let's go over there and do it over there. You know. <laughs> Uh, that that uh, most people seem to think that ISIS has not been shut down, that it's simply gone into somewhat of a dormant stage to try and regroup right. and get itself going again. And what we're going to allow it to do is to do exactly that. We did it once. We had to go back in, and mm-hmm. we're going to do it again. Yeah. yeah it's, well, it's I, I I don't think that they should pull out, but I'm also not the commander in chief. Okay, today yeah. you had you had Mattis quit. You had uh, um, uh, what? There were a couple other things that happened. Today. You had the the the, uh, the shutdown of the government, or the fact that Trump was not going to go along with the plan to keep it open at least temporarily for a couple of months, so it doesn't happen over the Christmas period, and families can have a nice Christmas and buy presents for their kids with some money they got from their government job, you know. Uh, and and that that that, uh, that failed. Uh, today was a very catastrophic day. The whole the trouble with with the Trump administration now is there's no adult supervision. The you know. uh, stock market went under twenty three thousand. Yeah, that's another one. That his, his only claim to fame. Yeah. Well, you know, uh, he's being sabotaged by the Fed. They keep raising the rates. Oh, Jesus. Hey, uh, they're, Phil, they're saying Phil, they're everybody's against them. Phil, Phil before, before, the, Fed, before that, the Fed ever did that, the stock was going down, okay? Well, no, because they'd raised it four times so far this year. Because they're trying to keep a handle on inflation. There is no the problem, inflation. The problem is because Trump they is raised a victim. The there is an inflation. Have you seen the price of a McDonald's hamburger these days? Yeah, it's ninety nine cents. No, it's not. <laughs> it's like six ninety nine. Yeah. yeah. Trump is a victim. That's the problem. Exactly. He wasn't such a, yeah, I mean, I feel bad for him. Okay, that's all I'm gonna say. I'm gonna am I'm gonna put my mute on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's getting his mute on. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. A, there was another piece of news that sort of gone largely uh un reported the White House boost tax breaks that attracted Jared Kushner, Scaramucci, and other wealthy investors. This, this is one of the tax lo- breaks that, that uh, Trump put in the, uh, in the tax code that he put out. And uh, his son-in-law is, is investing a shit ton of money to, uh, I think, was it $13 million or something like that, uh, to, to s- scam this system that uh, good old Donald put in. Donald's going to make money on it. All of his family and, and all the wealthy people are going to make money on this. And, and it's under the guise of doing something good for, to allow so everybody could take part in the American dream of owning a home. Bunch of... Uh, I, I, don't, I, didn't, I don't know anything about that. Yeah. Well, well I'm, I'm not a never-Trumper. You know, like, I, I, don't, I don't agree with piling on but at the same time phil i don't believe in always sticking up for it so i think you know there's a balance that we miss a lot of the times here but the but the overall you know thing that's going on is that you know trump and trump family are going to be trump and trump family Uh, you know they're not going to stop wanting wanting to make money and you know and that's why i don't think the russian thing they i know they say uh oh trump was still negotiating to build a building in russia when he was running I don't necessarily have a problem with that, uh, you know, and, and with his business wanting to, you know, make money. That That's what they do. But there's just so many, many other things that go along with it that are problematic that, you know, it, it's an issue. Uh, you, so you can't say, no, it's not an issue at all. And at the same time, you shouldn't say, oh, it's it's the most corrupt thing since sliced bread, uh, you know. Well, when he was first elected, he surrounded himself with people that weren't yes men. Uh, they uh, they were people that, you know, like Mattis, uh, had different views. And I really thought that he was going to uh, look at those views and at least weigh them in and make a solid decision. I'm disappointed 
that uh, some of the people that were in his cabinet are leaving. And uh, I don't know if it's the pressure of the media and and all all the negativity and uh, and could it and very well be just, Phil? Phil, could it be that Trump is terrible to work with? There's a possibility, but you know when you take a, a job like that, it, that's the it, you, that's the cards. The you're fact dead. that people are bailing on him faster than off the Titanic uh, saw, seems to indicate that he is not the, the kind of person you me. would you want to work for him. Oh yeah, but I, I oh, was really? impressed with Susan Collins today. She did an interview and uh, she talked about. Uh, you know, the pressure she was getting uh, uh, involving Kavanaugh and her uh, her decision and, and what people were doing to her. And I don't, you know, her family, the threats, Ryson supposedly might have been sent to her house. They evacuated her house. Uh, this is the kind of pressure that Trump and his family has been under uh, for two years. I don't. I for one don't think I could handle. It. I don't think. I, know Susan, I, I don't think Susan Collins has the kind of protection that Trump has. Okay. Um, secondly, uh, I don't feel sorry for Trump at all. If he if he has has misery brought upon him, he's brought it upon himself. Well, and the, and the fact of the matter more. is, the fact of the matter is, uh, we're going to have a report coming out probably in early early February from uh, what's his name. Uh, Mueller. 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 And uh, I think when that happens, uh, it, the, the, the shit's going to fall. Because, it should be over. Yeah, because I, because, I, because I think it's rumored, and, and with from supposedly good sources, that inside the White House, he's worried about being impeached. Yeah, but even but, if he's but impeached, being impeached not, doesn't mean doesn't much. Mean yeah. Well, he's go so but between having them get a hold because they are going to get his tax returns. Yeah. That yeah. is going to happen and we're going to we're going to learn a lot more about what's going on in Trump land. Yeah. And his finances and his business Just ventures. More media he's, stories. He's more being stories for the media. He's but he's being circled. Right yeah. now. But by the way, by the way, by the way, that I think is in Thailand. Richard Johnson call, is calling. Okay. Is that, are you there, Richard? Yeah, I'm here. You're I there. can hear you. You can hear us, and you're in uh, in uh, Thailand, right? You're in Bangkok. Yeah, uh, Bangkok. Yeah, mm -hmm. Bangkok. And uh, uh, this universe. Is, uh, you, do you live there? Or are you just visiting there? Uh, well, uh, we spend uh, me and my girlfriend spend like three or four months a year there. Uh huh. Okay. And what, she, she's born in Thailand. Uh huh. And and where where do you call home? Yeah, I'm here. I'm here. Uh, I go home in. Uh, I live. I usually live in Norway. Oh, I see. Okay. Hmm. Yeah. So so now, how how do you, isn't this a wonderful world in which we have somebody here in Dubai and we have somebody here in uh, in Bangkok? Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, which uh, I guess if you say Bangkok, the answer to that is no, you. Uh, hey, Alex, this is there. the second time he tries to call in. Yesterday he tried. Yeah. Well, what inspired him to call in uh, to the show? Uh, I don't think he's ever called before. Yeah, Richard, what inspired you to call the show, Phil wants to know. I, I, I accidentally been following the show since I got an, a used iMac from a friend of mine. Uh huh. And he had all these radio channels uh, on it, and I found Gabnap. Oh, so really? I started, I started listening to. It. Oh, okay. Well, I hope you enjoy it. You know. Yeah, I enjoy it. I enjoy it. Yeah, yeah. Now, as somebody from Norway who is now in Thailand, uh, we've been talking about Trump. What is the uh, feeling in in your country of Norway about our president? Uh, personally, I don't have. Uh, very much feelings about him, but uh, in Norway and Scandinavia, he's been seen as uh, he's been seen as uh, more or less as a prick. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's uh, that's a Norwegian term. That's a, no, that's a Norwegian term meaning mm. prick. 
yeah, yeah. yeah. Did, yeah. did Norway and Sweden <laughs> take in uh, a, a, a significant number of the Muslim re I'm refugees? A I'm a liberal, by the way. Yeah, yeah but the, the refugees yeah. from Syria, did uh, Norway... A liberal is not the same as an American American Democrat. Or a li I'm a li libertine, uh, you know, pro... Yeah. Pro weed, pro heroin, you know that kind of thing. Yeah. Okay. Good. Now, but like Phil wanted to know was uh, 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 what? What did you say, Phil? What was your question? Uh, I was asking. I think Norway, the Norway no. took a number, uh, a large number. Uh, I know Sweden did as well. Uh, the um, Syrian refugees. And uh, some of the news reports I see say that these refugees are causing a lot of problems in, uh, in resettling. Uh, has that been the case in Norway? Did you hear that, Richard? It, it certainly happens. Yeah. I mean, what were you going to say? What were you going to say, uh, 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 Bree? Well, it certainly happens. You know, um, it's as with any large group of people. You know, here's what I would say. People always say, you know, what are people like when you travel, when you go to the places? They're like, just like in the States. It's it's just that you view them as, as uh, different. Can you repeat that, please? Yeah, no, not the whole thing. Can you repeat it, please? Sure. Uh, well, Norway had a pretty homogeneous culture, right? Uh, you know, it didn't have uh, a, a lot of other uh, people other than Norwegians. Now, I, oh, I we was do under, now. We do now. Yeah. Because of the Syrian resettlement and refugees, yeah, yeah, is, yeah. is that causing any issue for your government? Oh, yeah, your... yeah, 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 it does. It, it does, but uh, it's, uh, well, how can I put it? Uh, yeah, well, there is two sides. Uh, Against each other, so it's definitely causing causing an issue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. Well, okay. yeah, because I, you know, I see in the news that there's there's rapes, there's crime, there's all yeah, of this stuff. Yeah, yeah. Is that true uh, or is it bullshit? Yeah, you know, well, you know, if in Os Oslo it's a lot of crime, Oslo the capital. Mm -hmm. uh, if you go out in Oslo, you 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 you'll be you'll be probably offering drugs within five minutes. Uh, yeah, but none of that does, uh, uh, Richard, I, I think what he's saying, and I get you, Jeff. It is a lot of crime, but uh, no, no, but I not think, as much as the same. I, I think the question he's asking is, is that <laughs> crime? There is, is, uh, is there that, an issue about how many they're going to take in, yeah. how many refugees they're going to take in, but it, and but, all that. But is the drug problem a uh, result? Let me, an, Richard, uh, Richard, Richard, can uh, you hear me? Richard, Richard. Refugees, Richard, right? Richard, can you hear me? No, it's, Richard, it's, can you hear me? Can, can you hear me? Okay, I, I hear you. I okay, hear you. what I want, what I wanted to ask you was, uh, are the refugees the ones selling the drugs, or is it just generally you have a drug problem it, in it, Oslo? It's, it's both. It's both. Uh huh. Okay. Uh, it's a lot of pay. pay. Yeah. Are yeah, you? Yeah, are yeah. you I think he's. I think listening. he's getting. Yeah, he's yeah. Richard, getting Richard, the show on a delay. Richard, you know what yeah. your problem is. You're listening to oh, the yeah. show. You're yeah. listening yeah. to the show. Turn that off. Yeah. Okay. Turn yeah. turn off whatever you're listening to it on because you're getting a delay. It's your browser. If your bra yeah. your browser yeah. has wow. a show playing wow. on it. It's actually not only the refugees. It's it's a it's a it's a mix. He hasn't but caught up yet. We have a problem yeah. with paperless. Yeah. Uh, uh, refugees selling drugs. Richard, turn off your browser so you can't hear the show. Just listen to us over your phone or whatever device you're using because that's confusing you. Yeah, you, you've got two feeds coming in. The live feed and uh -huh. then the, uh, the browser feed. Yeah, so and just use Skype feed or your phone. In other words, delayed. turn the audio off that you're listening to the show with. Don't don't yeah. listen to that. Just, I have to do that too. I usually listen on my Alexa tap. We just lost. When I call him. in on Skype, we, I we just you know I turn him. the Alexa off. We just lost yeah. him. Anyway, uh, yeah, he I, I he doesn't know. Yeah, uh, yeah uh, for anybody who's going to call the <clears> program, <throat> when you call, if you're listening to us say on the internet, turn it off, okay? And the reason you turn it off is otherwise you're going to be about thirty <laughs> seconds behind, and you're going to react to what you're hearing. Uh, from the show. Uh, 
although that's been the problem with Phil for the entire time we've known him. But yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. I'm tired tonight. God, I can't drink enough coffee. Yes, Jeff. Jeff had his hand up. Jeff. I, I had a question for Richard, and obviously uh, he's not on now. But, but you know, Norway uh, is really very close to Russia be, because of the, the way their architecture is. It right. goes way right. up right. north and then kind of comes around. And actually, I think they can actually touch Oh yeah, with some of the Russians. Wasn't, I th- I wasn't th- Finland, yeah, a sat- Finland a Russian satellite? No, I don't uh, think so. There, when, no. Uh, under the uh, Soviet Republic? No. Uh-uh. No, uh, no, no. Which which one was a Russian? You know, was was sort of controlled by Russia. A lot of countries, but not. That. No, no, no. But I thought it was Finland. No, no. Finland. It, Finland's a uh, 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 Nordic country. <coughs> right, well, but Finland, was one... Finland was influenced the most by Russia, but they were never yeah, part of the Soviet Union. Yeah, they were yeah. a quasi-satellite. No, they weren't. Well, uh, Russia had a lot of control. Phil, they yeah. weren't a satellite of the Soviet Union. Get used to it. <laughs> they weren't a satellite. Okay, go online and look it up. See if you can find the answer. And <laughs> we'll talk yeah, about we'll it. Talk, it's we'll, complicated. We'll, we'll, we'll There's talk. a different way of saying a quasi. You're full of shit. <laughs> Quasi moto. Mm-hmm. Quasi. Um, Bell ringer. But I, a lot of people have a fear that without Mattis there, uh, the adult supervision has come to an end. You know, if if in fact he also had any Kelly. influence. Mm. Kelly as well. I, I th- they were the yeah. adults in the room who were, uh, you know, and I think. Kelly and Conway? I thought she was still there. No. <laughs> oh, oh. General Kelly. Uh, they they seem to have really, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, I think they just didn't, got tired trying to deal with Trump. I think he's just, you know, it's my way or the highway, and he doesn't listen to anybody. And quite frankly, I, I think that you could take the most a learned president we had. I think probably one of the most learned presidents we had was George Bush Sr. I mean, he had done everything except, you know, wash dishes at the White House. He, he knew everything about the government. And yet, I'm sure he listened to his experts. Of course. That's the idea of having a panel of experts. Strategize. You know, but Trump is Donald, used to Donald having Trump a company. Just, he, he, Shoots from the hip. He doesn't believe in strategy. He went to bed last night. The uh, the Senate stayed up late because he said that he uh, he would sign a bill to keep the government open until February. These guys do that. He wakes up this morning and he turns on Fox and Friends where he gets all of his briefings. And they <laughs> chastise him for giving in. Suddenly, Trump has to change on a dime. And Coulter. That's just the way this guy operates. And Coulter went after him. Yeah, he, and, and he and actually he unfriended back. her. He unfriended her. <laughs> yeah, on Twitter. He doesn't follow her anymore. He doesn't. He, he does. only follows about. He only follows about forty. I haven't people. followed Ann Coulter since the nineteen eighties. Yeah. Well, you know, she mm-hmm. is the ultimate skank. You know, blonde she, the goddess. She is kind of Trump in you know female version. I, yeah, uh, I guess. In terms well, of the media. She's a pundit, and she wants to sell books. But this yeah. is the first time I'm concerned that Trump doesn't have the support that he needs. Uh, I'm sorry that Kelly and, and uh, Mattis who, are leaving. And, and, and who, uh, who, I hope that somebody is replaced that it will be good. And, and who's fault? Yeah, doesn't who's, even have a, a, a chief of staff or anybody in mind for a chief of staff. Well, so, he's got some temporary yeah, he guy. Somebody. Ah, yeah, yeah. Uh, he, yeah, yeah, yeah he did pick somebody, didn't he? I don't he know who he run picked. everything. Nobody wants the job. Ju- nobody wants the job. <coughs> you know? Well, nobody wants him. the job. Yes, uh, Jeff. You know, everybody started uh, talking about what should we do to change the United States to make it better. Uh, and... And I was, I've been thinking about that a little bit. And one of the things that I always like is the way England is oriented as communicating where all these guys are are, are from whatever direction that they are. They're willing to stand right in front of each other, pound their hand, 
their foot down and, and complain and and at least and, express yeah. what they, they're oh, really I love, feeling. Do you ever watch Parliament? And they get to wear wigs. It, it, cool. No, they, they My don't. My right no. fellow wait and a good friend wait a and child they don't wear <laughs> They don't wear wigs anymore. That's that's yeah. old stuff. Oh, damn. But yeah. they, what's great yeah. about them, though, is just when they're doing something, how they'll suddenly yell out, uh, here, here. Or uh, there, no, boo. You know, I mean, there, it's right. it's a very active kind of environment, and right. it's uh, it's uh, invigorating. You Does know. that really get anything done? Here, here, boo hoo. Yeah. Oh yeah. You know. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. I think so. When what the, are we getting done? When the prime minister is up there saying what? something, and basically they want to say, "You're wrong," you know, <laughs> stop it, you know, and it, it's great. It's terrific. You know, and eventually you know. people will figure out that, you know, the Bernie Sanders model is the model that they they're going to need, uh, not the Trump model. When, when that when that when people if they can receive that message and understand it, then though there will be a big change. Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez is is sort of leading that. Uh, and, you know, and, and when people start figuring out that those proposals are actually in their interest for the masses, then there'll be a change. Yeah, but the, the you know, that's the difference between a global uh, society and, uh, and you know, supporting your, your own country. Trump is not a globalist, and, uh, you know, neither am I, because, we, you know, when it comes to the globalist... No, he isn't a globalist. Look, look what's going on but in what, China what right is he? now. It's like saying you're not an earthling. Right. You don't have a choice in the matter. Exactly. No, mm -hmm. but this is my village, and if you want to attack my village and and, and Of course and you stuff, protect your village, but right. it's, the, it's a world economy. It's a, We live on this globe together, and there's so much going on on this globe that we all need to work together to, to improve, to strategize, to We're get along. Ones. We're the only ones that are working. The rest of them are, are, are taking everything. The Chinese, for instance, they're stealing our uh, stuff. They're hacking our computers. You're they're, never going to change that. Well, you're, then, you, then why the price, would you just give it to them? It's the price you pay for high influence in how things are done in the world. And by the, the way, looks to the years, United States. For 60 years, our country has been uh, ostracized, and they said that, you know, we're the dirty, bad Americans. Yeah, now, sure. you know, hey, look, uh, you Who's go anywhere in, in Europe and uh, the, the Middle East, we were the bums. We were the bums in the 70s. We were the bums in the for 60s. For all the traveling I've done, in, the oh, for the all the traveling I've done in Europe, Phil, I have never had anybody Nobody. say that to me. Yeah. Never. They wouldn't say it to you. No, they it's, never. it's what they say, and it's what they do, not what they say. I have plenty of friends who are internet who are from Great Britain. I I work with people all hey, over the world. I I know gay people. I know black people. That's I have some friends. You know, look. All I'm saying is, where are you we, getting this Amer rhetoric? Um, America was was uh, was looked down upon for the last sixty years. And that's uh, ever, why people want to come here. Yes. And why? That's, that's what's surprising. They want to come here because America it's the was best country in the world. America has been looked upon, America down upon good. for the last 60 years. Well, if that's the case, then what are we doing wrong? Well, that's but if we no, were what doing we it do, wrong, you're we were acting, doing it under you're, Kennedy, you're we acting, were doing you're it under acting, Johnson. You're acting like we're bullshit. Phil. Phil, we we're not, can, uh, Phil, not listen down to me. Upon, I don't know where he's getting that. We are not looked down upon no. around no. the world. Must, we were must never. Have on. never. No, actually, quite frankly, the the attitude that I've seen expressed is they like Americans. They just don't like the way America does business. It's ah, not. But this well, is the way it's wait a minute. No, there, but there's years. a difference, Phil. If they we've been hated that much for sixty years, there's got to be a reason, and the reason could be because we're assholes. Well, look, the Iranians. Phil, uh, Phil, had Phil, a revolution Phil. If and, somebody, if enough people tell you you've got bad breath, you got you really ought to take a chance at smelling your own okay, breath. You know. But it wasn't Trump that created this. It's been this way for the last yes, sixty years. Yes, but he even he has he has uh, compounded it in space. He's made it worse. He's made it worse rather he's than just better. continued, and and he's also recognized that. These people have been you know, taking our I money watched, for, I watched for, today, for years. Today I was watching the news, and um, 
Barack Obama visited a hospital in Washington, yeah, D.C. for kids. Yeah, Christmas. And I watched him with these kids, and I watched his demeanor, and I just went, God damn it, I miss that. Mm-hmm. You know, I miss the yeah. dignity. I miss the poise. Yes. I miss the humanity that this man possessed. Yeah. You know, yes. you may Things not think he may not have been a great president. <laughs> he may have had his faults because he really was new on the job. He got better as time went on. But I got to tell you, God, that was a nice family. And that was a classic. He wasn't perfect. There's no question he wasn't perfect. But but, But Donald Trump is the way the way Trump was competent. Yeah, he was competent. But the way he wasn't perfect, turn that completely upside down. And that's the way Trump is right. Okay, he did a good thing this week. He did a good thing this week. They came up with that prison reform bill. Mm -hmm. Great. Awesome. But think of something else he did that has any that's really been all that great. Anything? What else? Uh, tax cuts. And that was Kim Kardashian. Tax cuts are going to come back. Cut. And, and, and somebody said that you have Kim Kardashian to thank for that. Believe it or not. Yeah, the prison reform. But the tax cut? cut? No, oh, the yeah. the prison reform. Prison reform. Or criminal reform. Yeah. 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 He wanted to get into her pants. Yeah. No, no, I think I he wanted to get into her pants. <laughs> Is that why he did it? Because Kardashian, he wanted to get in her pants or something? It could be. There's Comey in the... In the, in the uh, what, what are you showing us pictures of from a Obama book? See, Obama with the kid. Yeah. This, yeah. yeah, Obama was a good guy. You know, he's a likable guy. Trump is not a likable guy. No, he's but not. You, oh, but, well, you, you know, finally it, figured it, that I one out, huh, I didn't Phil? vote for him because, uh, to be likable. But you-, you voted for a very flawed person with a flawed personality voted- who is scary. You voted, in the way he you voted he for a basically anyone else. You've basically voted for a New York gangster. Exactly. Exactly. That's who you voted for. I saw a documentary. For, he has ties to the oh, Italian yeah. mob, too, not just the Russian. Yeah. Hey, you know, a lot of people had ties to the Italian mob. Yeah, Obama did, too, I think. You know, yeah. my father uh, had a union uh, carpet installation know, you told us room in New York City. You, you told us the story over and over again. You know. All right. Well, every 15 minutes, the audience changes, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, they would they'd stay around for a half hour, but you're on. So uh, <laughs> thanks. <laughs> Alex, is tonight the last show? or No, tomorrow night is, tomorrow. The, is the last uh-huh. show of the year. Yeah. Yeah. Let me take some time. Someone should make a book of all of Trump's tweets. Just to make a book, you know, and like comment on. <laughs> That's a great idea. Yeah. Oh, well, shit. I, I, I wonder if there is one dollar idea. You know what? The, uh, what? 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 Uh, if I, I, I don't. Uh, you know, we know who his lawyers are, so we know they're not very good. Uh, but when you think about it, if if you were his lawyer, you'd say, "Don't do these tweets because anything you say can be used against you." It's not like you're saying something and they can't use these against you. This is something you did, public record, you said this, and now it's going to come back to haunt you. And there's so much stuff in those tweets that the government no. can use against him if they decide to charge him with something, you know? Yeah, I, I don't know. He puts out so much, and it's all up for interpretation. You know, I was the first one, so. Bree, you know, I was the first one, Bree, to say to, uh, I think it was Amy on, uh, when she used to be on uh, uh, Jack's show, uh, don't hope for impeachment because that ain't going to happen. You know. No, I'm hoping for I'm hoping for him to be be smirched bad enough. But he has fucked up so badly that I think there is a chance he will be impeached. Now, whether well, he, what, he what, maybe the charges will be brought up, and Clinton was impeached, but he he lasted yeah, yeah. two terms. So. Right, right. But yeah. it's more I'm, likely he'll resign. That's the no. hope. I don't no, think. I don't so. think he. He'll do that. No. Well, how They're about if they? Go after how about it? And yes, yeah. He's going to have to resign pardon. to keep them out of prison. No, he'll just pardon them. I don't know that he can pardon them. It depends on. Yeah, the, he on absolutely the, can, and the people. It depends. Are, they, are, they, are they state fine. charges? Right. State oh, state you're right. Charges. You're right. If they're state charges, Bree, he can't pardon them. No. No, because which state is it? Who's the governor? New York. What is his New political York. party or her political New party? Well, New York State. New York politics. State is where he, the Trump Foundation uh, has been found guilty of malfeasance. And, and there are they, a lot of other things dealing. They'll dissolve that. There are a lot of things. He, he de- de- they're, they're political family. It, 
they'll just they'll just you know figure out politics how to get around it. What I'm saying, I agree with you, Bree. I think that what, any, anything will result in let a me fine. Tell you, at the end of the day, Trump wins. He he Bree, just, he will win. Bree, uh, what's his name? Jared's father went to prison. Yeah, but he wasn't the that president was before Trump was president. We'll see. We'll see. Do you think Jared's father would have gone to prison if he had gone to prison today? Yes. I don't yeah, know. I think so. Yeah. He still would have. Yeah, uh, probably. You know. Is he still in prison? Look. I think he's dead. Yeah. Uh, Are you telling me that you think this man could, if, if they find, he's already been, he's already, what's the word? In, he could be indicted on the charge that Michael Cohen was in. Yeah, is this in, lost Ray. You do you, no. if you some president, Michael Cohen was his lawyer, and you know what he does is he insulates himself with the with the lawyers, so they have to be willing to go. Well, but Michael Cole, Cohen Michael rolled Cohen, over on him. Yeah, Michael Cohen says, uh, "At the direction of, I did this. At the direction of, he would well, be going to prison if he were you or me or anybody else, quite frankly." Well, so it, because it's Cohen, right, but he's not. But because wait. Cohen's an attorney, and it was an attorney-client relationship, it would the would the information that Cohen is giving uh, still hold up because it's being uh, it's violating that uh, attorney-client privilege? Correct. No, it went into the media, and once it goes into the media, that's Trump's playground. That's his. <laughs> he is the king of, of that uh, arena. Once it goes in there, you're not going to get him. And and he's going to spin it, and it's going to work in his favor. He's he's a genius at that. By the way, we're being joined. Ray wanted we're being to say something. We, okay. Ray. Uh, oh, I need to go because my battery's dead. Oh, so okay, Ray. All right. All right. See you oh, later. See look, you who's here? See you tomorrow. Hey, Kevin. Okay. Look, Kevin. Hey, did, Kevin, did, did you did you have, have your the operation today? Did yeah. you have your procedure today? Yeah. Y yeah, and. Yep. Everything went fine. I'm a robot now. You're a robot now, but. Uh, <laughs> Uh, they they put they a did thing, a good job. They put a thing in his. <laughs> yeah, don't look any different. They put a thing in his back or wherever. It's on the outside now, as opposed to the inside, and they're testing it. And this is supposed to alleviate pain, right? Yeah. And how's yeah. it doing so far? Well, my back's killing me, but uh, it, it from takes the a couple days to kick in. Yeah. But I've noticed one little thing that's already working, so. You're getting in radio stations better. <laughs> yeah. yeah he, What's that? He's, he's getting did, radio did, stations in better. And his did they, yeah. his did wife they run his Wi Fi his wi the penis? His Wi Fi is killer. <laughs> yeah, Just, I can turn that up real good, Phil. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's great. <laughs> oh, this is all it is, is right. Oh, this one right here. Yeah? Yeah. Oh wow. Oh, wow. Yeah. How do you take uh -huh. a shower? How do you take a shower? Oh, Carefully. Put plastic over it, I guess. Mm. I'm not. I got a sponge bath for a week. Yeah. Ah. And then if this works, they'll put it inside you, right? Yeah. 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 Now, you can turn it up and down. It looked like a plus and minus on that. Is yeah, that they, gotta, they call me every day, and then they're going to ask me how it's doing and what's working and what's not, and they turn it up and down and all that stuff. By the way, welcome, oh. everybody, to Alex Bennett's waiting room. It's Alex. Mm. Waiting room. Feel free. Was, feel was, free to read the magazines. We still have a boy's out. life from 1947. There, you know, <laughs> the page yeah. is stuck. O Obama was on the cover. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> but uh, no, it went okay. It was uh, kind of painful for a little bit, but they just kept giving me more drugs when I said "ouch." So what do they do? They just insert it in your skin, or do they actually push it in? No, further? it goes up the spine. Up the spinal cord. <laughs> they run it right up the spine. Yeah. <laughs> they showed me pictures of it sitting back there, and it sits right along the spinal cord and then runs out the side of me, and then they connect up these leads to it. And, yes. and then after that, they connect it to the computer, and he sits there and goes, can you feel this? Can you feel this? And then when it starts zapping me, they kick that back down because that's a threshold. Mm -hmm. if, if it was a little higher, they'd call it a prefrontal lobotomy. Yeah, well, <laughs> I, I told them, I said, you can't direct that thing anywhere else, can you? Is Apple coming out with a version of this uh, at all? Is there any chance of that? Yeah, on the next oh, one. You know yeah, <laughs> just don't hook up one. Siri to it. It'll really screw it up. <laughs> <laughs> at least you're not a low bot. 
Yeah, yeah. Um, Thank you. Uh, but anyway, oh, hey, uh, by the way, uh, uh, it, on another thing completely, Rob, I, I got my uh, hard drives yesterday. Ah, did you get? I your... got mine today. I hooked it up. I got the RAID five going. Yeah, and oh, I've no. been playing Raids with it. Terabytes coming. I've been playing with it for. You know, there is so much trying to figure out how to make this thing work. Mm -hmm. I mean, not to make it work, the basics of making it work, but all of the different apps and software and things that you can do with it. Yeah. It's it can really. I I got the weekend. I'm going to spend the weekend with. Well, I can't well, Sunday. I got to leave for New York, but. Saturday all day. I'm going well, to. Well, we should talk by with. phone because mine's coming tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, we we could talk by phone. So, absolutely. So your dashboard, all you do is you just plug it in, turn it on, and make some choices, and that's it. That's how you set it up. Yeah. Um, what do you do? Raid Raid Five. Yeah, Raid okay. Five. Yeah. yeah. So and you have one the, backup drive, right? Raid I don't five. have any backup drives. No, well, you I, I mean the Raid don't Five. Oh. I'm getting a no, four. Because I only have three drives, and you can't do a RAID five with two drives. Uh, uh, I see. Yeah, but I'm I'm doing. I've got four drives, so right. I so can you can do, do a RAID three three plus one, okay, which I is can a do... RAID five with three drives plus the hot spare. Well, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I so I have to set it for three plus one. Well, you 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 well you could do it that way. You could also use all okay. four drives, and then you don't oh, have an end bugging drive. out. I can use all four drives and what? So you could you use all four drives, right? Then you don't have the spare. Then you'd have oh. to have a spare on site that you could just oh, pop in, like yeah. buy a drive and 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 just push in, and it'll rebuild. If if it goes bad, if but, it goes bad, but, but right. that's your setting at what RAID five or what? Yeah, RAID five. RAID five, mm -hmm. so, and that's what I should do. Is I set it for RAID five? Yep, I would. Okay, and what did you do on yours? Five, RAID 5. Oh, RAID 5. Yeah. Okay, well, what were you saying with the 3 plus 1? Well, that's a – so you'll have a RAID – you could do a RAID 5 where you've got a hot spare, meaning a drive that's just sitting there doing nothing that if you if one of your drives dies, that one takes over. Uh -huh. The other way you could do it is you can have a RAID 5 that spans the entire four disks, and you don't have that spare just sitting there waiting. You'd have to pop out the bad drive and pop in another good drive. Okay, so – but and then it but, rebuilds. But, but, but I can, rebuilds. but in other words, I can make it a RAID five and uh, not uh, do the spare, and and it'll be fine. Yeah. It'll still rebuild itself if I put in a new drive. I think it can. I mean, it depends on the yeah. software yeah. on the you know on okay. the device, but, but it is possible. But anyway, I set it. it for RAID five, is what you're saying. Right. Yeah, okay. You want RAID five? Uh, all right. Good. That's all I want to know. Oh. No more of that, folks. Take care, Bree. Oh, Bree. Bree's waving. Oh, Bree's oh, going. Yeah. Hello, Bree. Are you going or are you just waving? Yeah. I'm I'm going. <laughs> You're losing me on this. No, no, this. we're not. We're through talking about that. You know, uh, actually, <laughs> Bree probably knows as much or more about it than uh, than most. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we're and I see we're running out of time too. So I want to get to my Merry Christmases and Happy New Years. Uh, I'll try to you know uh, touch in tomorrow, but I never know uh, yeah. what my schedule will be like. Well, and uh, you know, have a have yeah. a Merry Christmas. It's going to snow. Oh, Not Bree, here. did you get that job in Singapore, or, or uh, what was it? I'll Singapore? let you guys know in the new year. Ah, okay. Okay. Yeah, I have some more information on that, yeah. but nothing solid right now. But just okay. taking a look around. Uh, we got our fingers crossed for you. Okay, thanks. Yeah, <laughs> uh, but uh, uh, and a happy happy new year too. But hopefully, we'll hear from you tomorrow night. You know. I hope so. Okay. Take care. Everyone. Okay, he's got to run, right. ladies and gentlemen. Bye. Bree from. Bye. Dubai. Du goodbye from Dubai. Uh, or something like that. Anyway. Uh, so, um, in, in the time we got left here, I, let me bring this up. You know what's coming up uh, the 20th of uh, January is the State of the Union address. Isn't that when oh, yeah. it uh, usually is held? I thought that was in February. No. I think it's later in, in uh, January. January. I think it's 30th or was something. Was it February? Yeah, it's like it's, it's very close to February. Is this going to be his second State of the Union address? It'll be his. It should be his. What, should does be he have one? Yeah, he doesn't have one the minute, like two minutes after he gets into office, does he? No, or maybe no, he but does. It's been two, two years, so. Right, uh, but it, I mean, he, he, was, 
you, you get in office on the 20th of January. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have you, one like two like, weeks later? No, you have it a year later, right? No, so then that means that we don't have a State of the Union address the so first year a president is elected. Oh, okay. So this is his first State of the Union. This to be his second State of the oh, Union. Yeah, okay. had one last year. No, no, no. He did have one last year. That I remember. 2017, uh, so it, it can't be January twentieth because uh, yeah, it's it's like it, the end of January or early February. It, it's like that week, window. two weeks there. Yeah. Well, the t- two thousand eighteen State of the Union address was given by the forty fifth president of the United States, Donald Trump, uh, on Tuesday, January thirtieth. Thirtieth, yeah, yes, two thousand eighteen. So uh, if he did it, then I guess I I don't know. I don't think he did one before that. Did he? Or did because he'd he only been, been there for a week and a half. No, well, no, la- no. Last year on, in 2018, no, he had he had been there a year. Been there a year. Yeah. Right. So he did one. Yeah, January 30th, 2018. Now he got yeah. he got inaugurated on January 20th. Would he then give a State of the Union address after that? Is the question. Going to Google Not it. In 2017, it. no. Yeah. But anyway, he's only been there for ten days. It, it was the most attended ever. What can he say yeah, about he the can state? Of, a lot what up what in can 10 he days. say? What can he say about the State of the Union? The economy isn't strong. In fact, the stock market uh, in the last month lost more money than at any yep. time since the Depression. That was a yep. necessary correction. Oh, I oh. see. Is that what they call it? Got to get worse. I think they call you know, it, I, in other it, in other places they call it a cluster fuck. It's still. Uh, do you remember what it was when he first took office? Was it nineteen thousand? No, it wasn't that low. Twenty one thousand. Yeah. So now it's twenty three. You know. Yeah, but how much of that was is a, a, a Obama? It started moving when Obama was president, and it continued. There was a, there was a certain amount of it you had to attribute to Obama. Mm-hmm. Maybe even up to the first end of the first year with Obama not being in office yep. as being the, en- the result. The end of Bush's, uh, it was in the 5,000s. No, right. I don't think it was that low. Yeah. Yeah, it was. Well, it was what? like five or 6,000. Really? Yeah. Now, we'll see. Donald will do that now. Yeah, but I mean, he yeah. can't, he can't sit around. He can't, right now, he can't sit around on the State of the Union and brag about the economy. No. Oh, he can. He doesn't say a word. You know, it's he, funny how he was saying done something he was saying wonderful. how wonderful things were with the stock market, and it was all because of him. And now that it's taken a tank, he's not mentioning a word about it. Uh, who who was the guy that was always running for president? Was it Harry Slauson or no, no, no? Like, you're thinking of uh, what was it? Harold Stassen. Harold Stassen. Yeah. Yeah. Stassen, yeah. Yeah. Well, maybe, maybe. they'll. Uh, Run him again, and then Trump will have a good chance of winning. Stassen's well, long most gone. presidents, most President presidents dead. in history, <laughs> usually don't squawk about the market because it's always up and down, up and down. And the president they don't doesn't take credit. It. Yeah, but it, he's the only one that's really, you know, taken a lot well, of credit well, for its being up all the time. Well, there's it never a, there going is down. A, the, if you may notice that. it, going down has a lot to do with whatever he's done that day. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Uh, uh, the the whole uh, trade the against tariffs, uh, tariffs against China and things like that uh, have uh, took a big dip when he suddenly said he was going to impose it again, and you know, I mean, it, it, uh, all the things he does have been bringing this thing down. Just as it tries to start recovering, he does something else. And it I, goes I hate to say this. W- I don't know if you've heard about it, Phil, but the garbage whole, th- the whole garbage thing, the recycling thing, is in a is yeah. in a big mess now because now China's getting real picky about what yeah. they're taking. Yeah, they won't take recycled. our garbage any longer. Uh, yeah, 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 they I'm, won't I'm, take the stuff anymore. They want it clean now. Yeah, they want it clean because but other countries are taking it. Vietnam and uh, other countries are are taking our garbage. Uh, you know, I, I think we should be recycling our stuff, I, and I don't think that we should be sending it abroad. We should 
uh, be forced to recycle it and, yeah, and yes, turn well, it into other products. There's stuff, I don't want there, people there, to use plastic. There's stuff, I don't want there's stuff people that you, to use straws. There's stuff you can't recycle. Plastic is very difficult to uh, to well, recycle. You, you, for instance, the straws and, and, and a lot of our packaging. It doesn't have yeah, to be Yeah, well, plastic. how are you going to... What are you, how, what are you going to turn those straws into? I said plastic is very difficult as a... As a well, th- uh, we, we recycle carpet. And, uh, and oh, here we go with your carpeting again. <laughs> well, no, but you know we're able to make uh, st- uh, roads uh, from it. We're able to make anything uh, black, like bumpers and rubber. Can we make straws out of it? Uh, no, but you know what? <laughs> people should people should learn not to use a straw that's disposable. Yeah. Uh-huh. If you want to yeah. use a straw, you should have a straw oh, that's oh, not yeah. disposable. Oh yeah, everybody wants to carry around. A I, straw I that they use over and over again and gets really dirty and filthy and gunky and horrible. I will use a fork to, to mix in the sweetener, like the, the sweet and low or something, before I will use a straw. Uh, and I, I can't tell you, top. Phil, I can't tell you the last time I've used a straw. Yeah. yeah. Well, the last time you snorted cocaine. But uh, no, no, I rolled no. up hundred dollar bills to do that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, but uh, so that's a paper straw. Do you remember uh, when they, you remember when they said that if you had a hundred dollar bill, chances are it had traces of cocaine on it that they had been used so high. much. Remember huh? those days? Yeah, yeah, those were the days. Those were the those, yeah when you can have a hundred dollar bill. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and it was worth a hundred dollars. You remember those days, right, Charlie? <laughs> yeah. Oh, Charlie's one of the boys who did coke like me. Oh, the same. Yeah. I never had enough money to do coke. Yeah. Well, I had enough. Co- I, it's like Robin Williams said, you know, uh, cocaine is God's way of telling you you're making too much money. Yeah. You, know? you know, even though you used to spend a reasonable amount of money on coke, you got offered more and and given yeah. more oh, yeah. by by people. Yeah. You didn't and, and have also, to buy all the time. Also, I mean, I was I had a, uh, a I was earning enough money that I could afford a certain amount of it without yeah. feeling it. Okay, you know. So. I were I was a DJ in a nightclub, and it was always handed to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you know, I mean, yeah, it was fine. I mean, uh, you know, I, 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 I was, I was Alex's mule. He called me up. He says, "Go over to Howard's and pick up." <laughs> yeah. yeah, right. Remember? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but Howard delivered though most of the time. No, no, I had to go. It was like one in the morning. Yeah. But anyway, <laughs> hey everybody, hell oh, boy. I didn't think I'd make oh, wow. it tonight. I was tired tonight. I don't know why. Uh, 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 Phil. Thank you so much. It's, you're welcome. It's a shame you're such a moron. You know, it's but. nice being right. <laughs> oh, one, Never. How for, would you know that? For well, oh. uh, be, uh, you didn't hear the earlier part of the show. Oh, okay. Yeah, no, it was uh, last night. His thing with the, the, the four point eight billion dollars going to Mexico. Mexico. That he he oh, was right okay. about, but he didn't exactly explain it correctly. Uh, he's still riding that one, huh? Yeah, he's still yeah. riding. Oh, absolutely. That. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. It's like my wife still remembers something I did ten years ago. You know, to, just yeah, to, yeah, they yeah. put it in the bank. He's like that. Uh, yes, <laughs> Rob, thank you so much, uh, and uh, hopefully you'll be here tomorrow night. Uh, and you you can expect calls from me saying, "What the fuck is raid seven point <laughs> nine?" Uh, 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 Kevin, good to see you back. Glad to hear it all went okay. And uh, that you've got some real spine. Uh, and uh, uh, <laughs> Charles, good, good two nights in a row, like the two old days, row. Charles. Good oh, to see you, Charles. Great to have you here. And Thanks, of course, uh, we gotta we gotta say a big goodbye to uh, to Jeff, who uh, we love having on this program. Jeff, thank you, uh, everybody. A eh, big wave goodbye, uh, and I'll uh, wave back. There we go. There they go. They're through. They're over with. They're gone. Uh, let me just hang up on him so the next guy, which is uh, Jack Bishop on the intersection, can use the uh, phone line, uh, the Skype line, to take calls on his program. And that's up next over most of the same station. Uh, I'm Alex Bennett. Tomorrow night, Damian Chaplin, 9.30 Eastern Time at 10 o'clock. I'll be here at, uh, t- at Easter, 10 o'clock Eastern Time. Uh, same time, same station in life. In the meantime, if you see her, 
Tell her I love her, okay? Bye-bye.